you feel like any little piece of information that gets out on you will be used by the worst people on the internet to destroy your life. And it's so isolating. And terrifying. It's horrifying. All right, that was Washington Post columnist Taylor Lorenz crying earlier this month over online harassment. But she has actually built a career off doxing and canceling other people, most recently a young woman behind a popular Twitter account called Libs of TikTok. Yesterday, she joined CNN's left-wing host, Brian Stelter, to justify her mission to expose that woman's identity. Watch. I think it's incredibly important, you know, as someone that covers the influencer industry, to know who is exerting influence in, in this way. I mean, for all we knew, this could have been a foreign actor. All right. Joining us with reaction is tonight's company, the vice president of Free Speech America and business at the Media Research Center, Dan Gaynor, and the host of The Trish Regan Show, Trish Regan. Dan, I want to start with you. She says that, you know, she's got to hold these people who have influence accountable and hold them to a higher standard. Um, it's interesting, though, she never seems to go after anybody but folks on the right. And not only just folks on the right, but often children. She went after the daughter of Kellyanne Conway. She went after uh, a couple other daughters of, of uh, Pamela Geller. And here, the Washington Post came out very publicly and said, oh, well, we didn't dox her. We didn't do anything wrong. When they, they included information in the report, the original version of the report, that led back to identifying who this was about and giving some personal information. They removed it, but they didn't even give a correction. So, yes, she does hit jobs on people she doesn't like. And if you watch that whole interview, one of the key things she says is, oh, because this person is anti-trans. So it's not just that the person's an influencer. It's that The Washington Post publicly disagrees with the position. So, Trish, the interesting thing in that clip that we played, right, is she says, you know, we, we didn't know who this person was. It's not like she was airing her reporting in real time. She clearly found out this woman's name. She knew her background. So she knew right away who the, that this was clearly not some foreign actor or some Russian bot. So it's not a completely fair statement to say, we didn't know who this was. I mean, so she knew that. And secondly, the woman's exposing the, a, lot, a lot of the curriculum and, and the statements that these teachers are exposing young children to. So it's, it's not just, oh, they're anti-trans statements. She's saying, hey, this is what these people are exposing your children to, and I'm giving light to it. That, that's not an entirely fair statement that she made there to Brian Stelter on CNN. Well, you know, I'm, um, I'm a big believer in things being exposed. And all of these people were saying these things. It's not like she was creating these mashups out of thin air. They were there, out there, uh, for somebody to just basically gather and, and repurpose, which is, is what she did. I mean, I would say this. I'm a big believer in, in actually standing up in front of your work. So I don't love the idea of these anonymous accounts, et cetera, although this one had a super clever name. Um, I, I, I like knowing what I'm seeing in the interest of transparency. Another reason why, by the way, hopefully this Elon Musk thing works out really well because he wants all these users authenticated. But nonetheless, what she was doing there for libs of TikTok, she was just exposing what all these other people, these uh, in, in some cases pretty pretty uh, crazy people were, were already doing. And and why not? It's already out there. We, we should see it. I want to see it. Yeah, I, I agree. I mean, it's funny because she was just basically saying, hey, here's what your kids are being exposed to. Take a look at it. Um, Dan, I want to go and show you a clip from another Sunday show on CNN State of the Union. Senator Elizabeth Warren was on there and she's talking about what the Democrats are doing and how the Republicans are horrible. Take a look at what she had to say. The Democrats are out there trying to do something. We're trying to save small businesses. We're trying to lower costs for the family who's standing there at the grocery checkout line and trying to figure out what to right. send back because they don't have enough money to cover. And what are the Republicans doing? They're saying, let's fight the culture wars. So, so Dan, let's just assume for one second that, that Elizabeth Warren is absolutely right. All Republicans are doing is fighting culture wars. That's it. That's all they're doing. At the end of the day, Democrats control the White House, the Senate, and the House by a, mar a large margin in the House. So if she has a problem with progress that isn't being made, it's her own party. It's not Republicans' fault. And yet the host is sitting there like, yep. 
Well, that's every major, uh, you know, legacy media outlet. Of course, they never correct her. They when they they bring her on to talk about lies that Republicans do, and don't remind everybody that you know that she went around with the nickname Focahontas because of her made up background of her Native American <laughs> heritage. Uh, so, uh, you know, that's not that's not especially surprising. But of course, the culture war, what the left and the media are really angry about, isn't that the right is fighting the culture war, it's that the right is fighting back against decades and decades, 50, 60 right. years of the left's culture war, and the right is finally engaged exactly. in fighting back. That's the issue. Mm-hmm.